நமாமி தன்வந்தரிம் ஆதிதேவ சுராசுரேர் வந்தித பாத பத்மம் லோகே ஜராரு பயம் மிருத்யுநாசம் தாதாரமேஷம் விவிதௌஷதீனம் சஹசிராட்சம் கணாதீஷம் ஸ்வகரூம் ச சரஸ்வதீம் ஜனகம் ஜனயத்ரீம் ச சாஸ்திராதோ பிரணமாம்ய நமஸ்தே ஐ வெல்கம் யூ ஆல் டு த சிக்ஸ்த் செஷன் ஆஃப் திஸ் சீரீஸ் where we are discussing about the knowledge of surgery in ayurveda with its relevance in current times in today's session the current session is going to be on the very uh, interesting and very complicated surgical arena that is the plastic surgery so as everybody knows that plastic surgery is something that incorporates wherein various tissues of the body are altered and made to look good or they are made to function better than it was before surgery so plastic surgery is that surgical speciality involving the restoration reconstruction or alteration of the human body so this is one of the most complicated um, sophisticated uh, branch under the surgical uh, and the main surgical subject and uh, it involves the uh, it or it involves or it demands uh, an expertise in surgical um, exposure in surgical practice an expertise in knowing the anatomy of that particular field surgical field expertise in knowing the anatomy of the vasculature the skin etc and it requires high degree of precision or um or very artistic um use of the hands for the surgical purpose so in plastic surgery as we know it in it involves the restoration and reconstruction of the parts of human body and this particular field was first um explained and also practiced by acharya sushruta and is well documented in the sushruta samhita in the sutra sthan so everybody ha- would have had heard about how um why acharya sushruta is uh, is named as the father of surgery and also the father of plastic surgery though um the father, uh, father of modern plastic surgery is different acharya sushruta always remains the first person to uh, have approached the uh, this area of surgical field so under plastic surgery the main two classifications are the reconstructive and the cosmetic surgery so in today's session we will be dealing with what were, what are the actual concepts of plastic surgery that are discussed in ayurveda whether it is vague or whether it is in detail and in depth um and also the various techniques that were adopted by acharya sushruta and we also come across in the text the explanations of or the predominance of the practice of reconstructive surgery and not the um cosmetic aesthetic surgery as in current times so since warfare um were common in those days so there were many instances wherein uh, people got injured with a severed nose or a severed ear uh, a, a cut ear lobe wherein or injury with their lips etc wherein most commonly the reconstructive surgery was performed over the face thereby facilitating the normal appearance and also the functional aspect of the same so uh, the word plastic actually means sculpting or reshaping which is derived from the greek word plastiko or plastika which actually means the art of modeling looking into the history of plastic surgery um, as described in the surgical texts so it states that reconstructive surgery techniques were carried out in india before by almost by 800 bc and it also states that acharya sushruta made uh, important contributions to the field of plastic surgery and also the cataract surgery during that time 
uh, it also uh, mentions about how um, british physicians and surgeons they travel to india to see the uh, procedure of rhinoplasty that was performed by um, the indian uh, shalya shastragnas that is uh, even today called as the indian method of rhinoplasty and also mentions that um, a person by named joseph carpew he spent 20 long years 20 to 28 years in india trying to study and also trying to gain the expertise in the local plastic surgery that was performed here in India and it also mentions that almost the western world did its first um, attempt in performing a major uh, plastic surgery only in 1815 so by the time the western world gained uh, an expertise in plastic surgery uh, hundreds of years ago the same was actually practiced in India by the uh, Shalya Shastragnas with good success rates with their methods of uh, plastic surgery. Um, coming to the uh, father of modern plastic surgery, so it is Sir Harold Guinness who is called as the father of modern plastic surgery and in plastic surgery the main two divisions as we have seen is the reconstructive and the aesthetic surgery. So in re reconstructive surgery the main aim is to improve the functioning by doing a reconstruction of the body and with respect to that of the aesthetic surgery so it is it mainly aims to reshape the normal structure of the body so that you it we can improve the um, appearance the patient's appearance and also the self esteem so um, it is something that is performed on abnormal structures of the body that is caused by congenital defects, developmental abnormalities, trauma, infection, tumors, disease, etc. So it is performed to improve functioning and most importantly to approximate the normal appearance. So though um, uh, you know the reconstructive and the aesthetic surgery, the aims of both of them are different, yet the importance of aesthetic surgery is that is that the result of reconstructive surgery is judged not only by its restorative success but also by its aesthetic quality so most of the time the uh, fulfilling the aesthetic purpose also forms a part and parcel of the reconstructive surgery the reconstructive surgery it includes surgeries um, of the craniofacial surgery the hand surgery microsurgery and treatment of burns all of these come under the uh, the reconstructive surgery um, coming to that of um, something uh, the classification and relevance to today's session so coming to that of the craniofacial surgery so it is usually divided into two that is the pediatric and the adult craniofacial surgery so in pediatric surgery it mostly revolves under the treatment of congenital anomalies as we discussed now pertaining to that of the craniofacial skeleton and the soft tissues of that area like the cleft lip or the cleft palate um, also um, involves pediatric fracture surgeries also. Uh, coming to the adult facial uh, craniofacial surgeries, it deals mostly with fracture and secondary surgeries such as um, that of orbital reconstruction along with other orthognathic surgery that is the jaw surgeries that corrects the irregularities of the jaw bones and realigns the jaws and the teeth practiced by the maxillofacial surgeons the next uh, category um, in relevance to uh, today's context is the microsurgery wherein it is concerned with the reconstruction of missing tissues by transferring a piece of tissue to the reconstruction site and connecting blood vessels so Suppose a part of the body or, um, wherein a, or a part of tissue is being uh, injured and now that is not uh, any more viable to remain as a part of the uh, other part of the body then that is supposed to be removed and the art of transferring a similar tissue from the other part of the body and, and also reattaching the blood vessels in its site that is what constitutes the ma uh, constitutes majorly the microsurgery and especially this microsurgery is um, 
practiced under um, the sub specialty includes the breast reconstruction head and neck reconstruction hand surgery hand replantation brachial plexus surgery all of these um, are the sub specialties under the microsurgery moving further on with respect to the various techniques and procedures so main importantly and in today's session we will be looking into the microsurgery and uh, the other various techniques of uh, reconstruction that were practiced by acharya sushruta before jumping into the explanations by acharya sushruta it it could become more uh, easy um, uh, to understand what acharya is trying to state once we um, uh, go into the points of modern uh, concepts of plastic surgery um, next moving on with respect to the techniques and procedures in the plastic surgery so in plastic surgery mainly there is transfer of skin so transfer of skin is the most common procedure that is done so among the same it can be classified into three that is the autograft the allograft and the xenograft where an autograft is that which are taken from the recipient so the tissue is taken from the same person from but from a different site whereas in allograft it is taken from a donor of the same species and in a xenograft it is taken from the donor of a different species so among these three it is the autograft uh, that is explained or that was performed by acharya sushruta now since skin is the important organ that we are dealing here with in case of plastic surgery so the surface of the skin is the most important biological layer for hemostasis and thus regeneration of skin is therefore very very critical in case of plastic surgery the main component of the skin that is the epidermis it originates from the deeper follicular elements um with um with the most superficial layer it loses the vascularity so with most superficial layer losing vascularity and it act as a barrier to fluid loss and thereby providing important protection against invention invasion by microorganism so when we look into the structure of the skin so according to the depth of the dermis plus the amount of elastin plus the amount of uh, skin uh, adnexal elements like that of the sweat glands or hair follicle etc so this um, combination of all of these three they vary from different part to part in the body that means that some areas are very very vulnerable to injury so if such injury are to uh, uh, to be happened and reconstruction of that site which are very vulnerable are to be done then it um, it involves a very crucial surgical play so for example like suppose if there is a simple flash burn over the back of the skin then there is only partial loss of the skin thickness but if the same flash burn happens at the level of eye lids then it there could be a the person could suffer a full thickness burn so that is the importance of the um, vulnerable areas uh, in the body and uh, thereby uh, demanding a very crucial um, uh, operative procedure moving on with respect to the skin vascularity so here since the skin is the important organ the next important thing uh, which plays a major role in plastic surgery is the skin vascularity so now, so suppose vaguely we uh, uh, we divide it into three planes like the outermost skin and the next just below the skin that is the subcutaneous tissue and below that the fascia then from top to the bottom that is from the outwards to the in, uh, inwards we have various um, vascular structures that help in or that uh, plays a part of the vascularity for the skin that is from the outermost we have the subdermal plexus the middermal plexus the subcutaneous plexus prefacial plexus subfacial plexus the perforating arteries we have the facio cutaneous arteries internal artery and the musculocutaneous artery so all of these are very very tiny vascular structure that helps in perfusing the main organ that is the skin here in this case so uh, now we know that the skin vascularity is derived from very fine perforating vessels that they they almost run through the underlying muscles and also the facial septal layers and finally they run horizontally in the planes from which the um, 
capillaries branch out so uh, usually these are um, the facial septal layers they run in the um, sub uh, cutaneous plane and from there we have the capillaries that branch out so when uh, uh, the local or a random pattern skin flaps are raised so usually they are lifted at the subcutaneous level and they are nourished by the subdermal plexus of blood vessels so whether uh, we have two uh, methods that is the graft and the flap they are, they are the two techniques which we will be seeing now in uh, shortly when they are raised it is it is with respect to the uh, the thickness of skin that are being raised now suppose a patch of skin is being taken from the area of the thigh to be replaced somewhere at the level of the face or the neck then the thickness of skin that is being scraped out of the thigh uh, will say whether it is a graft or whether it is a flap so when usually uh, when the grafts uh, skin flaps are raised they are lifted at the subcutaneous level that is what we saw with the three layers that is the outer skin then the subcutaneous tissue and then the fascia so at the subcutaneous level they are raised and there we have the subdermal plexus that will be perfusing the skin tissue however this plexus can only survive a limited distance from the more substantial arterial branches it cannot survive why for a larger distance it is only for a shorter distance so that is why anatomy of the skin and the tissues to be moved is the key element for a successful plastic surgery and this really really requires a high degree of precision of anatomy and high degree of precision of the surgical skill so if 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 uh, the procedure is done without the use of skin then without skin usually the wound heals by secondary intention that is with either the fibrosis or contracture and because of which what happens the underlying structures are vulnerable to either necrosis or chronic infection or dysfunctioning so that is why skin forms the major organ or a major part in the plastic surgery and the art of moving this skin along with the components to the required area and making that skin or that part of the skin live in the new area is the entire challenge in the field of plastic surgery now coming to the process of uh, or the techniques of either the graft or the flap what is the major difference between the graft and the flap so grafts are those tissues which are transferred without their blood supply um sorry uh, uh, the difference between uh, graft and flap so in graft we have something called as full thickness split thickness etc that will determine the thickness whereas the difference here is in the graft uh, it is without blood supply whereas in the flap it is um, including the blood supply so here in graft we it is without the blood supply which therefore it has to be revascularized once they are in the new site that is we are taking the patch of the skin without the blood vessel and we are putting it in a new place so now here the intention is once it is put in the new place there has to be an uptake of the graft that is the that part of the body should accept that new piece of skin and then what happens is that new blood vessel starts revascularizing in that area so in graft um, coming uh, uh, talking of, uh, like the anatomy of grafts then here we have different uh, classification wherein the first one is the split thickness skin graft so here what they do is that in the split thickness skin graft they are harvested by taking all of the epidermis together with a little bit of dermis layer so there are various layers of skin so here in split thickness skin graft the entire layer of the epidermis along with a little portion of the dermis is taken leaving the remaining dermis behind to heal the donor site so the dermal layer is not entirely scraped a little a little amount of it is left in the donor side so that that part should also heal the second thing is that the uh, the thicker the dermis uh, that is taken then usually what happens the more durable will be the graft once it is healed and also more difficult will be the donor site for healing so this is the crucial part in uh, with respect to the thickness of dermis that is taken along with the uh, upper epidermis so in a way the thickness of the dermis is 
good for the recipient site whereas the same thickness of the dermis if it is more it is um, a, a little disadvantages to the donor site now coming to the full thickness skin grafts so in full uh, full thickness skin grafts they are harvested to incorporate almost full thickness dermis as the name goes and along with the full thickness of the dermis there is also underlying fat that is also trimmed away with the dermis so many types um, elements of fats even including a little bit of cartilages part is also deliberately it is left attached to form a composite graft so in full thickness skin graft or composite grafts they need very careful handling of the graft and even in the post operative recovery and nursing time also to ensure that there is good take in the transplanted site so in a case of plastic surgery they use the word take that is the acceptance of the recipient site to the newer tissue it has to accept it so that is called as the graft take so in order of uh, for the good graft take careful handling and also careful handling during the uh, process and also in the post recovery is important now once these either the um, once the graft is uh, transplanted to the recipient site then how actually the grafts survive so in the first initial stage um, the split thickness skin grafts especially they survive by imbibition of plasma from the wound site so imbibition um, in simple word it means absorption of one substance by the another so here the plasma is being absorbed from the wound site and that is how the graft survive initially after 48 hours fine anastomotic connections start happening and that process is called as insoculation of blood so here actually what happens is subsequently the nourishment happens via blood vessel so how it happens is that there is anastomosis that is there between that is newer vessel starts invading from the wound bed to the existing graft vessels now suppose there is a wound like in case of a varicose ulcer or etc where it, it's not healing suppose we put up a, a skin graft then newer vessels start coming up from the wound back to the existing graft vessel so exactly when this capillary ingrowth starts happening then the process of healing will manifest with fibroblast maturation so this is how initially um, the grafts survive but in the late stages um the skin grafts usually uh, in during the process in the later stage it's it inevitably contracts with the extent of contracture that is determined by the amount of dermis that is taken along with the graft so that is why uh, along with contracture that may lead to um, graft rejection if a good post operative care and nursing and physiotherapy is not done uh, with it so the total success it depends on good and rapid wound healing detailed attention from the surgeon so that they are interdependent again adequate debridement careful technique gentle handling of tissues and consideration of the blood supply all of these are certain important factors that determine the success of the um, graft in the plastic surgery so there are various methods like what we saw one is the splint thickness skin graft so usually they are used to cover large size wounds or larger areas um, actually they have a limited durability and these may be used to provide valuable temporary wound closure before better secondary cosmetic connection uh, correction after rehabilitation is done so in case of full thickness skin grafts they are also called as wolf grafts so they are used for smaller areas of skin replacement and also where good elastin skin that is that will not contract very easily is required like for example fingers eyelids um, um, facial parts all of these here full thickness grafts are used we also have what is called as composite grafts wherein that is skin along with fat skin along with the cartilage where some other component is also taken along with the skin then they are called as uh, composite grafts that is they are useful for rebuilding missing elements like for example in case of nose eyelids fingertips ear margin all of them uh, other grafts are also there like nerve grafts 
tendon graft so this is basically about the graft now moving further about what is actually flap in the plastic surgery so while in the flap while we uh, already saw the basic definition of the same it is when the tissues are transferred along with the blood supply and they have an advantage of bringing vascularity to the new area so in case of grafts we saw that initially it's by imbibition and then by insoculation where the anastomosis of the new blood vessels from the wound bed to the graft has to develop but in case of flap what happens the area that is being taken from the donor side to the recipient side the tissue is taken taken along with the blood vessel that runs in the same area so we make sure that this blood vessel is in continuous with the its previous uh, um, uh, it has a previous continuity of it and it, it that that is being transferred into the donor uh, in, that is being transferred into the recipient side so these flaps can be raised to consist any specific tissue so there are various types of flaps actually so basically in uh, in uh, in a way of random flap in the first variety so it it has like a three sided triangle so there is no specific relation to where the blood supply enters so usually it has one is to five that to the length and the breadth um, usually it's not more than that and this pattern it can be lengthened by delaying the flap that is it's a process which cuts a partially made flap and it is lifted and it is placed on the um uh, recipient site so it is then replaced thus by straining the blood supply from a single border of the rectangle and at the second procedure it is finally raised and further transferred so though these are uh, a little bit more technical details of the procedure so basically here um it, it's like um a part of a, a rectangular part of uh, the skin has been taken um and it is just like moved away so maybe if if here the donor site and the recipient site are to be a little closer so that from the donor site a part is taken and without compromising the other end it is not like completely um the four edges of the skin is raised and it is put in a different uh, area one uh, edge of the skin is intact in the donor site and it is just that the triangular piece is moved sidewards along with the blood supply to the recipient site so next coming to the axial flap so here it is um, it is much longer flaps than compared to the random flap and here there are known blood vessels that are supplying to the skin and it also enables long thin flaps to be safely moved across a larger distance so in previously it was 1 is to 5 measurement in axial the length is even more so so that the flaps can be taken from one part and along with the attached other end along with either the blood supply or anything it is moved into the um uh, recipient area next is something called as the pedicle or the island flapping so here there is an axial blood supply for these flaps and they can be swung around um around the stock and uh, they can be completely islanded so what is the meaning of this islanded so suppose imagine a small rectangular like um area with a small uh, tail like projection or an axial um, projection coming out from one end wherein the blood vessel runs through this small tail like area and we have the rectangular portion of the same so this rectangular portion along with a little bit of the tail like projection wherein through which the blood vessel runs so it can be taken to a longer distance and with uh, holding uh, intact the blood vessel this uh, flap can be completely moved on to another area so previously where we saw the random flapping and the axial flapping one edge of the rectangle is uh, is made to stick in that area that is the donor area only but in island flapping that is why it is called as island because it is moved completely but only the smaller pedicle like part or the tail like part which incorporates the blood vessel will remain from the donor site 
so that is what is called as the island flapping like like that we also have something called as the free pla free flap wherein the blood supply has been isolated that is they cut the blood supply from the donor area it is disconnected and you go back and reconnect it using microsurgery in the new site that is called as the next higher level that is the free flapping we also have composite flaps composite again like how we saw in the composite graft in composite flapping various tissues are transferred together often it is usually the skin along with the bone or the muscle and or that is it is called as osseocutaneous or myocutaneous flaps respectively and they are placed into the uh, recipient site so these uh, are different varieties of flapping techniques along with that we are we have something also called as a perforator flap um, wherein there are a whole new subgroup of axial flap in which the tissues are isolated on the same vessels and then it is transferred they run from one major blood vessel to supply the surface so basically here what we have to uh, lay a stress on is the flapping technique that is extensively used in uh, used by acharya sushruta wherein we can even see examples of island flapping and axial flaps that were used by acharya sushruta which we will be discussing in short time in the same session this was in brief about brief uh, information about uh, the reconstructive surgery that mainly involves the grafting of skin grafting and the flap what is the difference between graft and flap and uh, how the skin is being replaced from the donor site to the recipient site again in raising the flaps there is something called as local flaps and distant flaps wherein the local flaps it it is raised just next to the tissue defect in order to reconstruct it so that the recipient and donor site is close to each other whereas in distant flapping it is used to repair defects in which the local tissue is inadequate the wherever the uh, recipient site is uh, the tissue near the recipient site it is inadequate to uh, transfer the same so the tissue is being used from a distant area wherein the distant flap is used so just like how we saw in iron flapping or the axial flapping the distant flap it is raised over a long pedicle and within that long pedicle that will contain the blood supply needed to maintain the nourishment of the flap the pedicle may be buried under the skin to create a island flapping or left above the skin to form a tube like um, uh, structure so in distant flap again there is something called as myocutaneous and fasciocutaneous based on how um, uh, uh, they are taken and transposed into the donor site um, in both of these uh, myocutaneous and fasciocutaneous flaps, they are based on the known blood vessel in the body. Talking with respect to that of the microsurgery or the perforator flaps. So, uh, as we saw, where in microsurgery is where um, uh, it deals with the uh, uh, transfer of the tissue towards in the donor site and then revascularizing the structure again so there with fine instruments and materials it has become a, a, a common place to be able to disconnect the blood supply of the flap from its donor site and it is reconnected in a distant place using the operating microscope um, so here with respect to microsurgery wherein uh, very fine instrumentations and very fine surgical skin and also the, the use of um, uh, microscopes and gadgets are very important and it needs a high precession of work. So again, redefining the myocutaneous flap because this, is, um, this procedure has been uh, or have, we get to see it in the text of Sushita Samhita. So, myocutaneous flap is something wherein it is uh, it is the most common means of moving flaps over long distances. So, wherein exactly in myocutaneous flap, a long muscle or a muscular pedicle that contains a dominant blood supply is used to cover the is used to transfer the um, flap from the donor to the recipient site. So, again. At the site of defect, the surgeon must be very clear that all the contaminated and dead tissues has been thoroughly cleared and cleansed and the process called as debridement or the release of constricting tissue is very very important 
for the uptake of the graft or the flap so and only then the surgeon must fi uh, then find a suitable blood supply for the tissue transfer and the site has to be reconstructed so this even in case of um, uh, microsurgery wherein or in free flaps um, wherein it is completely transferred into the donor site and then it is revascularized with the prominent blood supply in that particular area so this is with respect to um, the various methods of flapping and there are many criterias that finally gives a very good result and um, which marks the success of the entire process of uh, reconstruction. So they include careful planning of incisions uh, so that they fall in the line of natural skin fold lines appropriate choice of wound closure, use of best available suture materials, early removal of exposed sutures so that the wound is held closed by buried sutures. All of this play a very major role in the good result after the graft. Many reasons why there could be a reason for flap or graft failure is that poor anatomical knowledge while raising the flap such that the blood supply is deficient from the starting itself flap inserted is is in too much tension or there could be a local sepsis dressing applied too tightly around the pedicle microsurgical failure in free flap surgery tobacco smoking etc by the patient wherein major of it is in the hands of the surgeon where it clearly shows that it is an arena which uh, strictly demands highest surgical skill and practice. So now moving further on what was the precision of practice and what was that um, skillfulness in surgical practice uh, our, our own Acharya Acharya Sushruta had um, not recently but thousands of years ago somewhere dated back to 800 to 1000 BC so whether Acharya Sushruta knew all these information about plastic surgery that we just uh, briefly dealt with until now what exactly uh, were the concepts um, he knew what exactly was the techniques he followed um, will be now we will be now looking upon the same so coming to um, the plastic surgery in Ayurveda so Acharya Sushruta so basically we know that Sushruta Samhita it deals and focuses primarily on surgical knowledge and it also it is also uh, the Samhita which has documents documented documents over complicated surgeries performing complicated surgeries like that of cesareans cataract artificial limbs fracture surgeries removal of urinary stones focusing surgeries on the urinary bladder plastic surgery many of which wherein the procedures in they include the pre-operative operative and the post-operative treatment along with the management of complications that are documented in sushruta samhita which are applicable even today with respect to the plastic surgery or the operation uh, there are documentations of uh, operations of the ear the nose and that of the lip basically the ear and the nose that which is explained in the sutra sthana of sushruta samhita reconstructive plastic surgery which we see in uh, this uh, chapter of the Sushruta Samhita, wherein it is one of the oldest documented work on plastic surgery in the entire world, wherein the reconstructive rhinoplasty that was mentioned by Sushruta dated back to 800 BC, which incorporated a clear cut procedure of the plastic surgery, the principles being the same even today. Coming to the um, history of reconstruction dating back going back even to the time of Vedas few examples where we can see is the head of uh, Lord Ganesha that was being transplanted with that of the elephant head Ashwini Kumara transplanting the Bispala's wife with the iron leg Ashwini Kumara is also rejoining the head of um, the Dadichi examples of both homo and hetero transplantation are uh, are 
uh, documented and we get to see the examples of the same in our Vedas. So coming to the uh, coming back again to the principles of reconstruction in Ayurveda. So Acharya Sushruta has explained as I said uh, he calls it with the word Sandhana Karma in the 16th chapter of Sutrasthana in, in the Sushrita Samhita. When he describes the methods of piercing the ear lobule in infants, how it has to be done, what could be the complications of um, when doing the same, how they are to be treated and he also says how wearing a heavy ornaments uh, um, leads to the tear of ear lobules and if so how the ear lobule has to be repaired how they have to be sutured back suppose there is any other defect in the ear lobule it could be any kind of external because of an external trauma or a birth defect etc how any kind of defect he gives a um, number of 15 types of where defects that could happen at the level of the external uh, year and how they are to be repaired using the sandhana karma that is the plastic surgery in one of the instances he also gives the example of taking a flap of skin from the cheek region that is he gives a coat of pedicle flap that is um, to, to reconstruct the ear lobule uh, that along with the, that of a uh, constant blood supply so uh, thereby um, it this this very instance helps us to understand that it, Acharya Sushruta had the utmost knowledge of even the microvasculature and he practiced the most complicated uh, kind of pedicle flapping or island flapping way back hundreds of years ago so in uh, the 16th chapter, that is the Karna Sandhana Vidya Dhyaya. So there are 15 operative methods he has quoted to join the ear lobules or 15 methods of reconstruction of the ear lobule to put it in a better form. So the 15 names are as follows. They are Nemi Sandhanaka, Utpala Bhedyaka, Asangima, Gandakarana, Aharya, Nirvedhima, Vyavojima, Kapata Sandhika, Ardha Kapata Sandhika, Sankshipta, Hina Karna, Valli Karna, Kakaushta and Yashti Karna. Among these 15 varieties of uh, Karna uh, Sandhana Vidhi, uh, if we analyze it uh, deeply, we can see that there are techniques that are described both like for example when uh, when there is a ear lobule tear uh, in suturing the ear lobule wherein where wherein one side of the ear lobule is either short or the other one is lengthier than the inner portion such combinations are also seen we also get to see um, few explanations uh, in the same wherein it could be applied to many birth defects that happen with respect to the external ear and uh, also with respect to um, defects because of severe trauma um, over the external ear. So with um, understanding all the 15 varieties uh, with a view of actually what Acharya Sushruta was uh, practiced or what he has actually documented it's a little challenging and uh, it demands high uh, precision of knowledge of the uh, possibilities of uh, practicing the plastic surgery surgical techniques over that area we're trying to decode a few and trying to understand a few of these varieties uh, we'll be trying uh, today to analyze the same um trying to uh, hoping to understand all the um, 15 varieties of actually um, the complete meaning or a deeper understanding of the same moving further the first one uh, acharya has quoted is nemi sandhanaka so for that acharya uh, gives the explanation of 
ಋತುಲ ಆಯತ ಸಮ ಉಭಯ ಪಾಲಿ ನೇಮಿ ಸಂಧಾನಕ ಸೊ ವಿ ಕುಡ್ ಅನಲೈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ವೆರ್ ಇನ್ ಬೋತ್ ದಿ ಫ್ಲಾಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪೋರ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಪ್ಲಿಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಲಾಬ್ ಯು ದೇ ಆರ್ ಥಿಕ್ ವೈಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಡೈಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ದಿ ಉತ್ಪಲ ಭೇದ್ಯಕ ವೆರ್ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರೌಂಡ್ ವೈಡ್ again it ha- it has two equal dimensions of both the cut lobules he says vritta ayata sama ubhaya palihi utpala bedyaka that is those ear lobules which are broad elongated but they are equal in size both the um, flaps of the lobule are equal in size coming to utpala bedyaka acharya says vritta ayata sama ubhaya palihi utpala bedyaka so here it is round uh, almost round it is elongated and again uh, both the flaps are of the same size coming to valluraka hrisva vritta sama ubhaya palihi valluraka wherein the uh, the length is short the lobule length is very short yet it is um, round in shape and yet it has the equal amount of flaps that of the two pieces of the lobule coming to that of asangima so here he starts explaining about how there could be a difference in the length of the pieces of the ear lobule of the same ear here in asangima abhyantara dirga kapalihi asangima so here acharya says um where uh, abhyantara dirga kapalihi that is the inner lengthy part is lim- remaining and the outer part is a little short or it is atrophied suppose if there is an injury a long term injury uh, which has rendered the outer part of the piece of the ear lobule atrophied because of which it is shorted whereas the inner uh, has regained its um, uh, tissue integrity because of which it it remains lengthier that is in case of asangima next coming to gandakarna so here in gandakarna he says it is the um, uh, ulta of or the opposite of the previous one that is the asangima that is acharya says wherein here in gandakarna bahya dirga kapalihi gandakarna so here it is the opposite of asangima wherein the uh, in gandakarna the outer lengthy part is remaining whereas the inner part is atrophy next moving on to aharya so here in aharya yeah, he says a palihi ubhayato api aharya so in case of aharya both the pieces of the lobule they are destructed that is in general we have a very badly destructed lobule where in case of aharya next is the nirvedhima so here he says pithopama palihi ubhayatah kshina putrika shrito nirvedhimah so talking about the same uh, with respect uh, the explanation of the same in the tika by acharya dalhana so here he says pithopama ಪೀಠೋಪಮ ಪಾಲಿ ರೀತಿ ಪಾಲಿ ದ್ವಯ ಮೂಲತ ಎವ ಚಿನ್ನ ಭವತಿ ನಿರ್ವೇಧಿಮ ಇತಿ ವೇಧೇನ ನಿಷ್ಪನ್ನ ಇತ್ಯರ್ಥ ಪಾಲಿ ದ್ವಯ ಹೀನಂ ಕರ್ಣಪುತ್ರಿಕೆಯ ಉಪರಿ ವಿದ್ವ ನಿಷ್ಪಾದನೀಯ ಇತ್ಯರ್ಥ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾಬ್ಯೂ ರೈಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ um moolatah that is pali dvaya moolatah eva chinnam bhavati that is right uh, from almost from where the tragus part ends of the external ear since there there is the uh, injury to the ear lobule and uh, it is from almost including the cartilaginous part that there will be a destruction of the ear of the same so kshina putrika shritah so here it says that it's almost looks like it is attached to the um, tragus part that is putrika is the tragus uh, anatomically called as putrika in ayurveda so that is with respect to nirvedhima next uh, coming to vyavojima so in vyavojima acharya says sthula anu sama vishama palihi vyavojima so here one part of the cut lobule could be normal and the other could be abnormal or it one could be very small one could be um, uh, very thick so there is a difference in the texture difference in the thickness length shape and everything so in such case it is called as vyavojima next coming to kapata sandhika so here acharya says abhyantara dirga kapalihi itara alpa palihi kapata sandhika so here the inner half is lengthy and the outer half is smaller it is just like the 
previous uh, classifications what we saw that is with respect to the um, Gandakarana and the Aharya. Next coming to Ardha Kapata Sandhika, Bahya Dirga Kapalihi, Itara Alpa Palihi, Ardha Kapata Sandhika. So again here the inner half is lengthy and the outer half is smaller. In, sorry, inner half is short and the outer flap is lengthy. Coming to that of Sankshipta. So here in Sankshipta, there is Shushka Shashkuli Utsanna Palihi Sankshipta. That is the Shashkuli, that is the outer inner uh, uh, ear, external ear that constitutes the pinna, including the, uh, the cartilage in his part. So here it is, it is almost um, uh, very atrophied. Shushka that is completely it looks very dry um, as though it is raised a little bit and there is a very very short ear pinna of the uh, in the outside or in, in place of the um, external ear that is the external ear pinna. So it is almost very um, uh, small in size looks uh, atrophied and as so it is a little bit raised. Next coming to Hinakarna. So in case of Hinakarna, Palihi uh, Pariyantam Shushka Mamso Hinakarna. Again here again it also in, it, it indicates Anadishtana Palihi that is there is a um, flap like without a base with wherein there is extensive atrophy of the muscles on the both sides. Coming to Varli Karna. So in Varli Karna, Acharya says, Tanu Vishama Alpa Palihi Varli Karna. Again, these are all the variations with respect to the uh, appearance of the external ear pinna um, with respect to uh, its shape and uh, the size of the same. Uh, that is in Varli Karna, it is very thin. Valli means a creeper. So we know that the tendril of the creeper is very thin. So in the same way, the external ear pinna looks very thin. It's uneven and it is very, very short. Coming to Yashti Karna, Gratita Mamsam Stabda Siratata Sokshma Palihi. So it looks as though um, there is a very hard vascularized small lobule in, in, place, in place of the external ear. So it look, it appears as though it, there is the gratitha mamsa. Gratitha is something which is hardened. Mamsa is the uh, mus musculature or the muscle tissue. So the external pinna appears as though it is it looks like a highly vascularized very hard lobule. Small lobule. Sukshma pali. That is why they have used the word sukshma. Next coming to kakaushta. So here in case of kakaushta, Acharya says nirmamsa sankshipta agra alpa shonita palihi. So the, uh, the tip is very much shortened and it is less vascularized here in case of Kakaushta. So Acharya when he is trying to explain all the 15, he says the first 10 are operable. That is it can be corrected uh, using a reconstructive surgery. Whereas the last 5 is something that is inoperable. That is it cannot be corrected uh, even with uh, the Sandhana Karma. That is Karna Sandhana Vidhi. Coming to uh, now the explanations of uh, few of these which throw light on the methods of reconstruction that Acharya Sushruta um, was practicing. Going back to one of the um, 15 varieties that is the Nirvedhima. So in Nirvedhima according to the Dika, now each of these are given names not based on only the appearance of the ear lobule but few of them are named also based on how the reconstruction is done based on that also names are given so the naming here um, of each of the type uh, depends on whether the appearance depends on the treatment modality involved depends upon um, what could be the uh, cause of it all of these are included and um, henceforth the naming of each of these types are done. Moving back to Nirvedhima. So the explanation of Nirvedhima says Pithopama Pali Riti Pali Dvayam Moolata Eva Chinnam Bhavati that is there is um, there is excision of the um, uh, Pali Dvaya that is both uh, the parts of the lobule from its mula itself. So that is almost up to the when we move uh, think about the mula of the lobule then it comes up to the level of lower end of the tragus. So here he says Pali Dvaya Hinam Karna Putrikaya Upari Vidva Nishpadaniya Ityartaha. So Acharya when he is uh, giving the uh, Chikitsa Sutra he says Yasya Pali Dvayam Api Karnasya Na Bhavediha that is when 
the pali is completely absent that is the karna pali is the, that is the lobule of the ear is completely absent karna pita samaye madhye tasya vidva vivardaye so he says at the level of the karna pita that is the lower end at the level of the tragus that is the putrika in the madhya bhaga there has to be vyadhana done that is the incision has to be taken and then the skin has to be extended uh giving the appearance of the lobule so this is one variety of um uh, reconstruction acharya uh, acharya has said in case the entire lobule is um, destructed or it is absent moving next to with respect to uh, the kapata sandhika and the adha kapata sandhika when in one end is elongated and the other part is shorter compared to the other end so here he says bahya miha dirghaya sandhihi abhyantaro bhave abhyantarayam dirghaya bahya sandhi rudaruta so the anastomosis has to be done with uh, suppose the outer um, portion is the lengthier part compared to the inner part of the lobule then the anastomosis is to be done abhyantara that is towards the inwards that is approximating the outer uh, lengthier end of the ear lobule towards the short end end of the inner lobule making an anastomosis towards the inside that is towards the medial side whereas if it is the opposite that is the inner part of the lobule is lengthier than the outer shorter part of the lobule then the sandhi the anastomosis has to be done towards the outer part that is it has to be done done laterally so with the um, anastomosis of the same and joining of the same that will give an appearance of the normal ear lobule coming uh, to next to the chikitsa sutra of valluraka so valluraka in the explanation we saw vallurakam valluram iti shushka mamsam Shush, shushka mamsavat anekada vipatya yaha sandhiyate sa valluraka so in the explanation we saw that wherein the external ear is completely atrophied and very thin so here he says for valluraka ekaiva tu bhavet palihi stula prithvi sthira chaya tam dvida pata itva tu chitva cha upari sandayet so here um, the complete explanation of the method of uh, reconstruction adopted here remains a little unclear and um, uncl unconclusive but here it uh, with the uh, uh, shloka given here it is clear to be understood that ekaiva tu bhavet palihi stula prithvi sthira chaya tam dvida pata itva tu chitva cha upari sandayet so here he says that with the whatever is the availability of the skin in that area so that here he says tam dvida pata itva chu tu chitva it has to be separated divided and then extended to give it a appearance of at least the approximation at least close to that of the appearance of the normal ear pinna next moving on to um the um gandakarna so here uh, in the tika he says why it is called as gandakarna is because when in in this variety of um uh, karna sandana that is the process of uh, reconstruction a piece of muzzle is taken from the cheek in the uh, cheek is called as ganda in the anatomical words in ayurveda so through the ganda bhaga the mamsa is taken and then it is moved further to reconstruct the uh, destructed ear pinna so how that was done acharya says ganda utpatya mamsena sa anubandha jeevita karna palim apale karna palya palestu kuriyat nirlikya shastravit so here this one uh, shloka gives um, uh, information about many of the reconstructive procedures acharya sushruta was following so here he says gandat utpatya mamsena so first indication thing he says that a uh, muzzle a layer has to be removed that is along with the skin from the ganda bhaga that is the cheek layer so this indicates that there was practice of composite flapping at the time of sushruta that is it is not just the skin but it is also along with the other structures of the skin so a little portion of the mamsa is taken from the ganda bhaga sa anubandha jeevita so here he says sa anubandha jeevita the tika says ganda pradesha 
lagnen shonita sahitena ityartha so this clearly indicates that that piece of muscle that is taken from the cheek portion is lifted along with the blood vessels blood vessel that flows through that area giving again an indication of the island flapping or the pedicle flapping that was in practice in india in um, almost 800 to 1000 bc at that time even before all of these were even understood by the um, western world so here this clearly says that acharya sushruta used a piece of muzzle flap composite flap along with the blood vessel proving that um, that the practice of island flapping or the pedicle flapping uh prevailed at that time so that is taken from the gandabhaga and he says karna palim apalestu kurya nirlikya shastravet so he then says gandakarna chikitsa sutram is this that is by uh, when the um, in gandakarna variety that is where the ear lobule is destructed leaving all the other varieties aside when uh, in this variety whenever it is possible to obtain a composite flap from the cheek area and reconstruct the ear lobule that could be done so this is the best example for a composite flap island flapping and a pedicle flapping that was practiced by acharya sushruta next moving on to uh, the procedure in brief so um, acharya while explaining the perioperative uh, procedure he says um, Uh, there is one chapter called as agropaharaniya adhyayam in sutrasthana wherein he says before the surgeon starts a surgery or before a physician starts the treatment he has to be self equipped with whatever he needs so once the treatment is started there should be no panic of any material that goes missing that is needed for the procedure so he says agropaharaniya uktena samrita sambhara visheshatascha upaharet so he says for all this procedure whatever is that needed that is the shastra or the yantra that is the instrument the sharp instrument blunt instrument including the gauze the cotton the suture material etc whatever is needed that has to be kept ready before any of these procedures is done and he says he also uses the word that the um, uh, the physician or the uh, human who surround this patient who is undergoing the surgery they must be suprasanna that is they must the patient must obtain a pleasant feeling looking at them and uh, the people surrounding the patient undergoing surgery are not to look scary that is it is important for the patient to have a pleasant atmosphere at the surgical um room inside the surgical room and then he says gratita keshanta lagu bhuktavanta aptaihi su parigrahitam cha kritva so gratita keshanta that is the he uh, the tika says kesha vyakulataya karma abhigata that is the um, the uh, hair uh, that is present over the skin has to be completely removed and then the procedure has to be followed because if the surface uh, when the op- operating area is too hairy then there is karma abhigata that is a proper surgical procedure cannot be undergone uh, in ayurveda so in many of the instances where the shastra karma is indicated acharya uh, uh, indicates the um, uh, bhukta avastha that is the patient has to be fed with uh, the food and after that here the operative procedure has to be done there are certain contraindications wherein the uh, procedure is being pa- pa- uh, conducted in the oral site or in the part of the gi Uh, in such cases there are few contraindications of um, uh, abhukta avastha shastra karma uh, that is the bhukta avastha shastra karma and he says in such instances the uh, bhojana is not to be given apart from that in all the other instances a little amount of lagu bhojana including that of um, uh, along with the ghrita or sneha dravya has to be given because he says bhukta van shastra karma pida sahate so he says it is because of the energy derived from the food the patient it will be able to uh, withstand the surgical procedure or the surgical pain and then he says aptaihi suparigruhitam so apta is somebody who is um, on whom we have the utmost confidence on so such a person must be at the vicinity of the patient uh, helping uh, to um, 
holding him and uh, giving him ashwasana of uh, un withstanding and undergoing the procedure that is as a moral support to the patient and then he says chedya bedya lekya vedanaihi upapannaihi upapadya so based on the procedure he says either any form of the ashtavida shastra karma has to be adopted and the sandana karma is to be done after that he says uh, he also uh, asks us to inspect the quality of the rakta that comes out or the um, the color the texture etc of the um, uh, blood during the shastra karma to assess which the which is the predominant dosha that has been vitiated in the uh, karna so he says it could be vata dushta pitta dushta or shleshma dushta and then he says before uh, making an anastomosis uh, between the two flaps of the ear lobule he says punar vilikya anunnatam ahinam avishamam cha karana sandhim sanniveshya so he says punar vilikya this shows that the concept of scraping the edges thoroughly or scraping the wound bed thoroughly or scraping the or uh, preparing the recipient site thoroughly is very very necessary for a good take so because of the scraping it helps in good granulation and development of good collaterals because of which um, there is good perfusion and the graft failure does not happen he says punar vilikya so this is one of the important procedure even in anastomosing a cut lobule uh, it it could be because of a simple we wearing a heavy ornament the heavy earring um, continuously there could be a split in the ear lobule so even then before it is not sutured immediately or just like that approximating both the edges of the ear lobule the inner edges of both of them are cut they are excised a thin layer is excised and only then both the ear lobules are sutured he that he says before suturing punar vilikya so first the scraping has to be done and then anunnatam ahinam avishamam he says it, it neither it should be everted edges that is the edges should not raise above ahinam or um uh, it it should not be that um uh, it is not properly approximated a vishamam wherein one uh, both the lobules are not approximated correctly one is lengthier one is shorter nothing of that sort should be done and he says only uh, in samata that is avoiding all other mal alignment the suturing only then later the sandhana karma has to be done he says cha karna sandhi sanniveshya sanniveshya is aropya aropya is nothing but making them come along or come together that is the making the anastomosis of both the ends of the lobule so he then says sthita raktam sannidhya sandhanam kuryat so he says the care also also must have to be taken about the hemostasis there that is the pressure has to be applied and the bleeding has to also be arrested he then says tado tato madhu grutena abhyajya pichu protayoho aveshtya so in ayurvedic surgery in madhu and grita is a combination which is a very good wound healer so this is used in the post operative phase that helps madhu is again antiseptic both of them are lipophilic there is good absorption and it has been seen that the use of these both in fresh wounds especially that is the um, sadhyavrana both of these are very uh, useful in helping in quick healing of the wound so that is applied and then he says sutrena anavagadam anati shitilam cha badhva that is this has to be um, uh, a pichu that is a gauze has to be placed over it and then using a um, suture material or using a thread it has to be made to stay over that part and this has to be done with very uh, good precision and bandana should be done very very carefully is what acharya says kapala churnena avakirya acharikam upadishet so this is one variety of churna that has various herbs that helps in uh, good healing process so uh, dusting uh, the same with that then avakirya acharikam upadishet that is acharikam is ahara and vihara so acharya and sutrasthana previously Uh, and also in the later part he deals with what are the varieties of ahara that is the food uh, uh, items that are to be consumed in the post operative phase what are the activities that are to be done that are not to be done by the in the post operative phase all of these has to be strictly 
followed and later on dvivraniya uptena vidhanena upachare that is in dvivraniya adhyaya later he says how the wound has to be treated whether it is fresh wound whether it is chronic wound non healing wound all varieties of wounds he says how the treatment has to be done and he gives 60 varieties of treatment in that chapter while he uh, in the explanation of how a wound has to be treated so he says based in the post operative phase based on the stage of the wound so and so treatment has to be done and it has to be taken care so again here he says uh, certain contraindications with respect to the plastic surgery or with respect to reconstructive surgery especially he says vigartanam diva swapnam vyayama ati bhojanam vyavaya agni santapa vakshramam cha vivarjayet so vigartana is chalana that is trying to move the um, you know the it could be either the flap or any uh, friction over the flap or the graft could lead to an injury and which could lead to the graft failure diva swapna vyayama ati bhojana so diva swapna in according to ayurveda diva swapna that is sleeping in the daytime it increases kapha dosha so suppose if it is done in the post operative phase it could in increase the excessive um secretion that is coming out and that again could lead to graft failure vyayama ati bhojana that is exercising is not good because it could increase the blood supply the blood vessels could dilate and uh, which again could be problematic and uh, according to uh, uh, ayurveda vyayama increases the vata dosha so vata vriddhi in the post operative phase is completely contraindicated so the body has to be in normalcy and no dosha should get aggravated in that phase to ensure proper healing and proper for recovery of the patient in the post operative phase again ati bhojana by overeating it increases kledatva that is it increases the kapha dosha again the secretions could increase vyavaya that is um, in, indulging in sexual intercourse agni santapa vakshrama so all of these that increases any of the doshas all of those activities are to be avoided in general those which increases whether it could uh, hamper the wound healing those that could hamper the recovery or in the post operative phase all of those are said to be contraindicated or to be avoided in the post operative phase so then he says um in the in the further um uh, shloka he says about the paschat karma so then uh every three nights once amataila sechana has been indicated so amataila is one prepared medication that is prepared that is nothing but the tila taila but this is a special indication where acharya says that this um till oil that is uh, being used is not extracted using machine but it has to be extracted using the hand used by pressing the kalka of the tila uh, inside the mushti so he says ama taila iti apakva taila tila kalka nishpide nishpidanena mushti tah parisrutena ityartha so only that variety of tila taila is to be used so uh, work has to be done and this has to be assessed as why he has specifically indicated uh, and contraindicated the tila taila that is extracted out of the machine so in further stages again he says um, how the wound has to be taken care and how the uh, um, that is any ahara and vihara that could lead to upadrava of the vrana or the um, athura avastha that is the patient stage post operative phase um, could be hampered all of that has been uh, told and he he then also gives certain indications of uh, what are the different kinds of varieties of oil that could be used that could be used in the dressing of the wound that helps in better wound healing and uh, helping to gain back the integrity or the appearance soon to reduce the scarring all of this uh, have been told and he gives a list of various dravyas that is the ingredients that has to be used in preparation of the medicine so this is with respect to the karna sandhana so here in karna sandhana what we could see is that many varieties of um, reconstruction of the ear has been told by acharya and trying to analyze it if whether he has only focused on the reconstruction of the ear lobule because of wearing a heavy ornament whether it is only pertain to um, the reconstruction or anastomosing the split ends of the lobule so in 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 analyzing it in such a way 
we can see that if uh, we um, if we go through the asadhya variety of the last five then it shows uh, certain explanations that these are referring to certain congenital defects of the external ear canal so many congenital defects are uh, explained even in modern uh, science of, of that which could happen at the level of the external ear so we have something called as microtia or anotia wherein it is the congenital malformation of the ear in which the external auricle is underdeveloped or it is either abnormally shaped or it is totally absent that is in case of anotia so or in certain cases the external ear canal may be atritic that is it could be absent so even in microtia there are different varieties like uh, type 1 type 2 type um, uh, three wherein in one case the ear is small the ear canal may be narrow and structures of the ear shape are otherwise normal in another variety ear is small but certain components of the ear is missing shape is remarkably abnormal but ear is still recognizable in the third variety wherein the ear consists of a vertical mass of soft tissue and cartilage and it is usually typically associated with atresia of the external ear canal atresia is the absence that is the closure of the orifice where it has to be in the fourth variety it is the most extreme and rarest form wherein all external ear structures are absent so when we came across certain varieties of um, in the 15 uh, classification that is that was given by acharya sushruta few of them also appears very close to the explanation of what we read in under the congenital abnormalities of the external ear pinna so apart from uh, the small ear that is the microtia there is also something called as um, prominent ears wherein there is abnormality uh, the it is usually a, a cosmetic abnormality but it can give negative effects on the self esteem next is lop or cup ears wherein it means that the rim of the ear is tightened or it is constricted so this condition could range somewhere from mild to severe so in children with most severe cases only they have the ears that are rolled almost into a tube so with inner ear deformities that can affect the hearing so such explanations could be uh, uh, parallelized with the explanation given with acharya sushruta and especially the five varieties of asadhya uh, karna sandhana wherein uh, he says these five varieties uh, cannot be uh, treated or it, the surgery is not helpful in su such cases could be to one of these rarest varieties uh, also and this area demands um, further work and to draw or to exactly say that um, this was the exact meaning what acharya was trying to convey now moving next to the important part that is the rhinoplasty that is the indian method of rhinoplasty that is very um, famous and also uh, being um, practiced the method being practiced even in current times so he uh, here in case of reconstructive rhinoplasty so in the cha same chapter acharya says and he says that it is indicated for the nose which um which, which is either lost by you know either by trauma or because of accident or there is an injury to the appearance of the external nose any uh, kinds of injury that has happened at the level of the external nose is where he indicates the reconstructive surgery or the reconstructive rhinoplasty so here um in a brief explanation of the same so in the entire procedure he explains of um a, a procedure wherein the portion of the nose to be covered first and measured with a leaf so he asks us to use a leaf a broad leaf to be kept over the nose and then measure the dimension of the nose just like to have a blueprint of the same to take a graft from the other side and then he says then this uh, then a piece of skin that is required of the size that is being taken at uh, by the by using the leaf with respect to the dimension of the nose so that that particular a piece of the skin of the required size that is to be uh, dissected from the live in skin of either the forehead or the cheek and then this skin is supposed to be uh, you know uh, turned back to cover the nose keeping a small pedicle attached to the cheek so here again he gives the indication of it could be the indication of a composite graft 
it it could also be an indication of the pedicle flapping again and also the perforator flap at this level so the part of the nose to which the skin is to be attached that should be made raw by cutting the nasal stump with a knife again this is the indication of scraping to enhance good take of the graft or the flap so that is the area wherein the new skin over the nose has to be placed that part of the skin of the nose has to be scraped well and only then the new skin has to be transpositioned there so he then says the physician then should place the skin over the nose and and um, he must you know swiftly um, attach both the parts keeping the skin properly elevated by inserting two tubes of the arenda mola so arenda is ricinus communis where uh, the stalk of which is is hollow and the uh, the younger ones are very small and tender so he says they has to be placed within the nasal cavity to ensure that the shape of the nose remains intact during the procedure and also to ensure that the nasal cavity the passage is patent for which helps in breathing purpose and also helps in restoring the actual shape of the nose while performing the surgery so while inserting the two tubes of arenda in inside the nasal cavity so in the position of the nostrils and then make uh, making sure that the 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 shape of the nose is um, being appropriate after that the suturing technique and the bandhana vidhi has to be done after powdering the area with um, the rakta prasadaka and the vrana ropaniya dravyas and um, the post operative care has to be done so this is in brief the explanation of the nasa sandhana uh, going to the shloka details of the same going to the uh, of shloka details of the same so in the procedure he says visleshitasya tu atha nasikaya vakshyami sandhana vidhi yatavat so that is visleshitasya means the tika says it is chinnaya that is which in a, in case of a severed nose i will be uh, further dealing with how to repair the severed nose by using the sandhana vidhi that is the reconstructive surgery in the next line he says nasa pramanam prathvi ruhanam patram gruhitva tu avalambitasya so prathvi ruhanam is vrikshanam that is using on um, that is a vriksha patra that is on the leaf you must first mark the dimensions of the nose so it is similar to a blueprint that is uh, taken tena pramanena hi ganda pashvat utkrutya baddham utkr to atha nasikagram so the same similar dimensions of that the skin has to be raised that is a flap has to be raised from the ganda pashva that is from the cheek region utkrutya means to raise baddha baddham means baddham is uh, baddham iti samlagna syat mamsam iti shesham that is along with the mamsa bhaga that is samlagna means that is it is attached to so here he says baddam baddam iti samlag samlagnam syat mamsam iti shesham that is it is attached to the mamsa bhaga so this could be the perfect example of uh, the full thickness skin graft wherein it is taken from the ganda parshva along with the mamsa bhaga and then it is repositioned back at the recipient side that is at the level of the nose so um, uh, then he says vilikya cha ashu prati sandadita that sadu bandaihi bishad apramattah so vilikya again he gives the example of the uh, the recipient site um, management that is the scraping has to be done to ensure a good take of the graft vilikya chashu prati sandadita that sadu bandaihi bishad apramattah so once that is done the um, graft has to be placed Uh, over that position and he says sadu bandair hiti shobana bandha and then bandhana has to be done that is bandaging has to be done which is shobana that is which looks good a, um, uh, a very shabby or a very absurd kind of bandaging technique is not supposed to be done at the level of the nose and it has to be very um, pleasant to look at shobana bandha or it is uh, a good quality of bandaging by using the word shobhana he again ensures that we have read previously that bandaging technique suturing techniques handling the graft all of it plays a very major role in the good uptake of the graft so with this he has also show, uh, uh, 
given importance to stress upon the fact that the bandaging technique has to be very skillful and it has to be very precise and then he says su samhitam sam samyak gato yathavat nadi dvayena abhi samikshya badva so he asks asks us to use the nalaka krita erenda patra nala kritamba so it could be either the erenda nala that is placed inside the nostrils or it could be the erenda patra that is folded as a tube and placed inside both the nostrils to ensure patency and also to ensure that the normal structure of the nose is remains intact from the in in perspective to the external appearance of the nose pranomya cha enam avachurnayet tu patanga yashti madukanjanaischa and then again in the, just like in the same as the karna sandana even in nasa sandana he gives a list of various drugs that are to be sprinkled over the operated site or over the graft site that ensures the uh, success of the uptake of the graft and he uh, asks us to cover it with pichu and then do the bandhana again the grita prayoga is also been advised even in case of nasa sandana so all of these are something which like um, rakta chandana rasanjana etc they are vranaropana they are very good um, uh, herbs that prevent the infection at the operative site also thereby giving a good success in the post operative phase this is exactly um, the indian method of rhinoplasty that was um, uh, practiced by acharya sushruta that was Uh, uh later practiced by the uh, western surgeons by 18th century that is by um this uh, 17th century that is by 1815 uh, to be very precise coming to that of the oshta sandhana so in oshta sandhana he says nadi yogam vina oshtasya nasa sandhanavat vidhim cha eva meva janiya sa ragnah kartum arhati so he says it is the same procedure that has to be followed with respect to even oshta sandana wherein there is a split uh, lip or uh, 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 up to the level of the um, the nasal bridge or it could be the upper lip or the lower lip he says in all these cases where there is um, uh, either the malformation or trauma to or there is um, damage to the external lips so he says it in almost the same procedure is uh, to be done E- even at this procedure also i, I mean even in uh, in this uh, site also except that the use of nadi that that was used to be inserted inside the nasal cavity that part is to be avoided that is not necessary here apart from that he says the same procedure has to be followed so this is uh, the example of or uh, the explanation of the plastic surgery is uh, specially the reconstructive surgery that was practiced by acharya sushruta and uh, if we um, if we come across the same and try to analyze both of them we could understand the uh, level of expertise acharya sushruta uh, uh, showed back then by uh, practicing even the toughest um techniques of the pedical flapping island flapping perforator flapping trying to even um do various reconstructions at the level of external ear giving 15 varieties of the same uh he uh, also uh, uh, adopting the procedure of a full thickness skin graft that is a composite graft along with the uh, muscle layer that's the fat fat layer to be used for as for the reconstruction of the um uh, damaged external nose and in this explanation we also come across that though the uh, words used are crisp and they are the sanskrit words they are used that use of every single word shows the depth of understanding of the procedure and the understanding of the entire uh, surgical modality by acharya sushruta like the word punar vilikya or uh, unnamya etc so all of these shows that those small important steps that form a crucial part in the success of the plastic surgery or the reconstructive surgery as a whole now yesterday when we discussed about few things that play a major role in uh, the success of um plastic surgery like careful planning of incision uh, so that the you know the, the incision they fall in the line of the natural skin uh, crease 
appropriate choice of wound closure, appropriate use of bandaging materials, suturing techniques, early removal of the exposed suture, all of this. Um, whether these were also uh, given importance by Acharya Sushruta. Though the same has not been explained in this particular chapter, but in the Sutra Sthana previously, Acharya Sushruta definitely makes a comment on where the suturing, where the incision has to be taken with respect to which part of the body. Uh, and he also says, what is, uh, uh, how exactly the excision has to be done, how exactly the skin incision has to be taken. The suturing techniques also has been told by Acharya Sushrita with respect to different parts of the body. Management of large wounds, all of these are told by Acharya Sushrita which, uh, which helps us to uh, analyze and realize that um, it is it is just to avoid what in Shastra, in um, the Vaidika Shastra, there is something called as Punarukti, that is wherein the same um, uh, vishaya or the same context is repeated again and again. Usually this is avoided. So it uh, it is very much understood that while we are reading the previous chapters, so the concepts or the techniques that are told in those chapters, they are to be carried out and they are to be understood that they are to be adopted in, in further techniques and procedures also. So wherein in the initial uh, chapters, Acharya is clear and he says, uh, uh, where, what are the different types of incision that are be taken on different parts of the body how it is to be done what is to be not followed um, suppose if it is not done in the same way what could be the changes with respect to wound healing uh, it that could also lead to the formation of keloids all of these are told by Acharya Sushruta in uh, in with respect to how the incision has to be taken before the operative procedure uh, the modern science also has described incision that it has to be taken in certain direction of the skin creases to avoid tension on the incision line in order to also avoid the uh, wide and ugly scar for the same purpose, Langerhans lines are being described. So it is according to that how the incision has to be taken. Coming to, with respect to the role of debridement and irrigation. So uh, Acharya Sushrata has given importance to wound cleaning and removal of hard margins and scraping of the wound while describing Ashtavida Shastra Karma and also under the 60 methods that is the Shashti Upakrama for the treatment of the wounds. Even in modern um, uh, treatment protocol so there is uh, it also describes the importance of debridement and irrigation in order to achieve good capillary bed for the acceptance of the graft otherwise there could be rejection of the grafts so that is why acharya clearly mentions punar vilikya and that the word has been there in all the three varieties of sandana karma with respect to the suturing techniques again acharya sushruta we have detailed explanation like uh, uh, how details of approximation of margins, proper strength uh, to the knotting, period of removal of suture on different parts of the body, uh, the animal origin and plant origin of the suture materials through which the suture materials can be made. All of these are told by Acharya Sushita. In the modern science, again, we have both the natural and the synthetic varieties of sutra materials. But it can be said that artificially prepared sutra materials, they possess medicinal properties which may help in wound healing, which is um, both anti-inflammatory or it could also be antibiotic uh, to some extent. Uh, that is avoiding infections, um, uh, easy uh, occurrence of infections. With respect to the management of larger wounds, so in case of reconstruction of the nose, reconstruction of the ear, reconstruction of the lips, we can observe that the methods described in Sushruta is the um, Samhita, Sushruta Samhita is one of the most pioneer methods um, that is it, it, it is it was even adopted and it is even adopted even now in the modern science and also that these procedures are followed just like how Acharya Sushruta has described it in the Sushruta Samhita thousands of years ago like the reconstruction of the nose using a um, using the frontal uh, graft from the frontal area keeping the blood supply patent like this uh, the varieties of grafts varieties of flapping technique all of these are being told by Acharya Sushruta and the same maybe it, it could be called with a, a different name or uh, or a different term but the principle, the ideology is definitely, definitely the same. So it is. Uh, it could. It could sound very trivial, or it could sound very. Um, 
a simple in today's era where there is so much of advancement in the field of surgery that that has been possible only with the aid of advancement of or joining uh, or physics joining the hands of um, surgery the concept the uh, principles of physics the principles of machine machineries etc and uh, medical engineering that has evolved in the current times that has uh, helped the field of uh, modern medicine um, a branch or developed to such an extent that it is flourishing to this day but what is that important thing what we have to know is when none of these were present when even um, I, I repeat it in every session when even a simple microscope was not invented it was uh, where the other western world did not even know how to basically they did not even know how to cook or how to, what to eat maybe when they were eating raw flesh it was our land or our um, great India that was practicing such uh, high preci precision uh, surgical skills, uh, such high degree of uh, medical advancement or medical therapies were practiced and they, it was not just practiced, they, with, it was practiced with utmost success and uh, keeping in mind the holistic improvement of the uh, patient's health. So that is why maybe even today uh, Acharya Sushruta he always is recognized and he will always remain the father of surgery, the father of plastic surgery all over the world. So the fact that such a man um, in flesh and blood performed these surgeries almost millennium before Hippocrates and um, either Hippocrates or Celsius or Galen ever appeared on the scene. It is very hard for us to accept it but um, Though it, it uh, sounds very hard, all of these are um, things that are truly happened in our history and that are well documented in our history, making us even more proud to say that our land was something that had no deficit or no setback, no matter whichever field it was. So feeling proud to be a part of one of such um, uh, field that is the Ayurveda Shastra uh, owing and uh, sincere salutations to all the Acharyas of Ayurveda uh, and salutations to Lord Dhanvantari I would like to conclude today's session on the details of plastic surgery in Ayurveda Namami Dhanvantarim Adidevam Surasurair Vandita Padapadmam Loke Jararuk Bhayam Rutyunasham Datara Misham Vividhaushadhinam Thank you.